Hello again, it's Mr RG Stuff back in the workshop and today I wanted to celebrate the fact that I've got to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Now this has uh, been something that I've been looking forward to for quite a long time and uh, I wanted to do a very special video um, to say thank you to everybody for all the, uh, the help and encouragement and support uh, that I've had over the years both in uh, subscribing and in uh, comments and the like. So um, I thought well what can I do that's sort of special? And I thought about uh, these things here. Now these are actually um, cylinders or cylinder records. And um, I've got a few. I mean, this is this is literally my whole collection. So I reckon I might have somewhere in the region of 678, but I've got five cylinders. But um, I've been very curious to know what's on them. And uh, I'll get a few of them out. Um, they're not all the same. Um, and uh, the boxes that they're in aren't necessarily the boxes that uh, they were originally in. So uh, you may uh, you may wonder why certain cylinders seem to be coming out of the wrong boxes. Okay, so you can see that there's some variation there. Some are black, some are brown. I think these two here are the uh, sort of oldest. I think these are brown wax cylinders. Um, I'm not sure uh, what the rest are made out of. I think these might be wax, but they're a later black wax. This one might even be uh, celluloid or something like that. Um, and it's, you know, um, nice to have. Um, and the boxes are quite nice, but I've always wanted to know what they sounded like. And uh, one of the problems is I don't have a machine to play them on. And uh, although uh, cylinders like this are reasonably common in the UK, I mean, they come up from time to time, not anything like as common as 78s. Uh, the machines to play them on are much, much rarer. Um, and I can't say I've ever seen a machine to play uh, a cylinder on in real life, uh, certainly not to buy, maybe in a museum. Um, so anyway, um, I thought I would do something about that and actually have a go at building my own machine. OK, so this is the very, very, very first test of this uh, machine with uh, a wax cylinder or a, a real cylinder in place. I don't know what this cylinder is made off. I don't know whether it's a two minute cylinder or a four minute cylinder. I don't know anything about the cylinder. I don't even know if the box that it came in is the right box. Right, so set audacity running and we set cylinder running. Well, I can hear music and I can see music appearing on the uh, PC screen. The advance is uh, quite noisy. It may come through a little bit. Right, I think we'll leave it there. Okay, well let's wind that back and see what it actually sounded like. That was running at 120 RPM, so that might not be the right speed for the cylinder, but that can be adjusted. Since first we met, her hair was then as black as jet. It 
white and a silky don't fret, not my or yet. We've been together now for forty years, and it don't seem a day to mark. There I shall I believe in the world, as I swap for me. Okay, well that sounded promising. Um, I've uh, deliberately recorded uh, both channels of the cartridge, so that would normally be for stereo, but in this case, because it's a, a vertical modulation or a hill and dale, um, then some of the sound comes out on one channel and some of the sound comes out on the other channel, and apparently you can sort of post-process it together to sound a bit better. So that's what I will attempt to do. Um, I also got caught out a little bit by just how fast the... Uh, the carries needed to move so uh, I'll have to look at that again right well here it is um, now as you can probably see it's mainly made out of 3d printed parts uh, all the blue all the blue is 3d printed um, parts uh, they're all my own design quite a lot of it is uh, new um, but some of the bits have been uh, reused from previous designs so um, basically what have we got so we've got this bit at the front here, which is the uh, the bit that, that actually drives the cylinder. Um, I'm using an old toilet roll actually, um, because it happens to be a very similar size to a cylinder. So it's a, it's a good practice cylinder that I'm not going to break or crack or anything. And um, the way this bit works is that there are basically two, um, two cones that the cylinder fits into. In fact, if I just use a screwdriver, this bit comes out. Like many things on this unit, um, it could be improved. So basically, there's a couple of uh, bits to hold it in place. And then there are a couple of these uh, I think they're frustrums, I think that's the correct word for them. They're basically cones with the top cut off. And uh, one is fixed in position there, and one uh, rotates, um, well one is uh, loose so it can it can go into the cylinder. They both rotate with the, uh, with the motor. Um, this has got a little patch on it so that I can use uh, something like well in this case uh, one of these uh, speed checkers uh, rpm uh, testers to check the speed uh, because i've got nothing built into it to actually do that so anyway um so basically what we've got is um a piece of threaded rod that connects to a motor via a bit of plastic piping basically as a coupling and we've got an end piece there with a bearing in it and another end piece here with a, with a bearing where basically the end of the rod um, actually has been turned down on the lathe so it fits into the bearing and then just fits into place like that The motor is out of uh, an old printer. I think that was a Xerox, uh, sorry, a Xerox printer that I took to pieces uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, it runs through an A four nine eight eight stepper driver, um, which I bought for another project. I've used those before, and uh, an Arduino Nano clone there, which is being programmed. Um, so if I set it going. Um, just got a three-way switch here so basically um, it will go at uh, two, two different speeds I think that's 160 rpm which is uh, I think the right speed for most cylinders that's 120 um, which is what I've been using and then basically speeding up the, uh, the recorded sound afterwards so um, that's that so that that's basically one unit um, it uh, shares its power um, with the other the rest of it but uh, um, apart from that it's completely separate 
So uh, on the back we've got uh, another stepper motor here which came out of uh, a different printer. I'm not even sure which printer that came out of and another sort of a soft coupling made out of plastic piping and shrink wrap or heat shrink I should call it not shrink wrap and uh, electrician's tape and another bearing that actually doesn't work very well I need to replace that one and uh, another bearing there and this is all fixed there's no need for this bit to, to come out um, because uh, I'm not putting on or taking off things and in fact um, the carriage there um, is basically mounted on two of these so basically uh, there's a nut that runs along a threaded rod and the nut is uh, held in place by two 3D printed pieces which are screwed together or clamped together with screws. Uh, so I can actually remove the carriage without having to muck around with the bearings at all. And um, as far as the back's concerned, I mean, um, it connects to another Arduino through another A4988. Get that right, A4988. Um, and... Uh, it runs back and forth. So that's moving it forward and that's moving it backwards and it uh, runs backwards at um, a faster speed than it runs forward just basically so you can get uh, it back to the beginning of the, uh, the song or the record faster. Now it's quite noisy that um, I've done quite a lot of work to, to try to make it quieter. Um, I've turned on micro stepping uh, down here on this controller um, and it, it's a lot less noisy than it was. In fact, I'll try and insert some uh, sound of uh, just how noisy it was before. So as you can hear, it was definitely noisier before. Uh, however, having said that, it's still not really quiet enough. So um, I've been able to take out the sort of rumble uh, using Audacity, but uh, it would be better if it was quieter. So I've got a couple of ideas, a couple of things which um, I've ordered um, for improvements to this to basically make it quieter. Um, so we'll see how uh, see how we get on with those when they turn up. And then at the back, um, well, actually, let's start here. We've got a cartridge. This is just um, one of these uh, flip cartridges, cheap flip cartridges, which I bought a few years ago, did a video on. Um, and it's connected up via the USB board, which I nicked out of that little record player in one of my previous videos quite recently. And I did actually nick the whole cabling out the tone arm in the end. I wasn't going to bother. I was going to leave it in place and make my own cabling, but I couldn't be bothered in the end. Uh, I just took the cabling out and uh, I think the only other thing to say there is that uh, the stylus on here is actually uh, a genuine BSR stylus um, that fits rather than the, the one that came with. So I'm using uh, a genuine brand new um, BSR 78 stylus, uh, which is by no means ideal, but it's the best thing I have. And uh, maybe in a future video I will look at uh, making my own styli, but uh, not just at the moment. Now I think last but not least is just this uh, wooden bit here which just holds the, uh, the tone arm up in the air. Um, and uh, the tone arm itself is uh, basically a rebuild, um, it's a reprint of um, the tone arm that I used on my linear tracking record player. So it's the same bits, I've just reprinted them because uh, I didn't want to destroy that build. So what I'm going to do now is actually put on a cylinder and play a bit of it. Um, I'm not going to play it all the way through. Uh, I actually have done that already. I've got the whole thing already recorded, which I'm going to upload as a separate video, partly in case there's a copyright issue and partly because I think you know other people might be interested in just hearing the whole cylinder sort of separately from uh, all this stuff about how I built this machine. Okay, so now the cylinder's in place, just going to give it a quick go through, a quick run through, just to make sure that it's turning okay. Yeah, 
it's not perfectly concentric um, I'm not quite sure why but something isn't quite aligned here but it's very very slight so I think that's okay so uh, let's take the tone arm back okay So make sure it's on the 78 side. Okay, if I start it now. You should see as it gets uh, sucked into the cylinder, basically the uh, stylus is running along the groove the arm is actually uh, turning on the pivot and it can only do that for so long before basically it's going to pop out the groove and that's where the uh, the compensation on the back comes in so what I'm doing is manually keeping the arm as straight as possible Ideally, of course, this would be automatic, and that's something I'll add to this in the future. Okay, well, hopefully that uh, shows uh, the basic operation and uh, the fact that it's uh, quite a manual, quite a crude system at the minute. Um, I have had a little bit of trouble um, with the needle coming out the groove. Um, I am running it slower than I think this cylinder needs. This cylinder, I think, is 160 RPM. And I've only played it at 120. I may well in the future play them at 80. And this arrangement at the back here I've definitely had some problems with. Um, so it's much better than it was. But it really isn't as good as it needs to be. Anyway, um, that's it for my special 1000 subscriber celebration video. I will put uh, the whole uh, recording of this cylinder up as a separate video if you want to listen to it. And uh, thanks again for uh, watching, thanks again for subscribing, thanks again for all the comments and, uh, and uh, I look forward to um, doing more videos and, and hopefully uh, you'll join me for those too. So uh, that's it for now, thanks for watching and if you have enjoyed this video then please do subscribe to Mr. RG Stuff. Thank you.